Case McCoy! Case McCoy! We need him to be our starter. I know it's hard to blame the offense when we lost our top three rushers, whatever the statistical chances of that happening were, but I think it happened for a reason, and that was to show us that David Ash is not good enough to carry this team. I said it in the pregame that it would be interesting to watch whether or not, or I, I knew that we were going to actually have to pass this week. And David Ash has a tendency, or at least he did Saturday, on a very windy, blustery day, um, to make it even worse. Sorry that I looked like a wreck. I just finished my workout. Anyway, um, but he had a tendency, has one, he just loves throwing the ball down the field. And you know, he can throw it 50 yards, that's sweet, awesome. Throw it however far you want. But you've, you've got to hit the route sometimes, and you, you can't just throw deep every time. The defense has to give it to you, and he threw deep way, way too many times, and he connected on one deep pass. I went back and watched the replay, and I think I counted six passes that I would consider to be seams or go routes or, you know, whatever. Um, where the offensive player is just running straight down the field. Um, and I know he's not the one calling the plays, but you have more than one route every time out. It's not just that he only had one guy and he was running down the sideline. He had other guys over the middle he could throw to. And when he threw the ball over the middle to guys, he was actually doing a pretty good job. But you, I know he's a young guy. But so is Case McCoy, and McCoy does not do that. McCoy got a few minutes to play here. But first of all, to both quarterbacks, I'm sorry, our offensive line can't pass block. They're great at run blocking. You know, got to hand that to, to them. They, they do a great job run blocking. I know they're young, too. They cannot pass block at all, especially not against Missouri's strong defensive front. They, who, in Missouri's defensive front did a great job. Um, and their secondary really did a good job, too, because when you're throwing that many deep passes, um, you know, you think eventually you're bound to get a couple, but Missouri didn't give up any, and except for that one, or I think it was the first one Ash threw, first deep pass he threw to uh, Goodwin in the first quarter. Um, and I know we didn't have Shipley either, um, which was part of the reason that McCoy didn't do as well when he was in, because Shipley just had a connection like no other, but it's like his brother, just like their brothers, um, but come on guys, offensively we cannot throw the ball down the field every single time, just, you know, McCoy made a living at Texas by never throwing a pass more than 10 yards, <coughs> more than like 5 yards really, but here's Ash, you know, he says McCoy is his basically football idol, and here's Ash dropping back, throwing a Hail Mary every time. You can't do that. You've got to have patience. You can't get everything back on one play. Now, the defense played fantastic. I can't say enough. Um, we only gave up 17 points. And what the field goal was off the blocked punt. And they got the ball inside the five-yard line and couldn't move it an inch. They could not go anywhere. And they started inside our five-yard line. So... Good job by our defense. Fantastic job by our defense all game long. One of the touchdowns we gave up, the second one, obviously, I said uh, in the halftime that, um, you know, shouldn't have even happened because there's that bad call about whether or not, or the helmet to helmet call, I think is what it was, on Kenny Vicaro, and it wasn't even helmet to helmet. So, bad call there. Really, they should have only had 10 points, and we still would have lost because. Ash can't, and I feel so bad criticizing because I know he's a freshman. And he shows a lot more promise as a first-year starter than we see or saw from Gilbert. But he just needs that. He just needs to real recognize, read the defense a little bit better, and realize that he had mo 
he was actually doing pretty well when he was throwing the ball in the middle of the field. And it doesn't even have to be in the middle of the field. Throw to the outside, whatever. But it doesn't have to be a deep route every time. Um, it's like a kid on a video game. Just, I just want to get a touchdown on the scene. Um, and apologies also to Missouri because um, I kept calling your quarterback Jonathan Franklin my uh, pregame video. Jonathan Franklin is actually a little-known writer, um, not a football player at all. <laughs> um, James Franklin, his actual name. Uh, you know, and we did a good job. Franklin did a good job of taking what the defense gave him, but we just weren't going to let him beat us uh, by himself. I mean, it's it's hard to say that you know you're not going to let a quarterback beat you because you know you. It's kind of hard to win unless your quarterback's playing well, especially when he's a premier player on your team. When you look at Franklin's game, he really didn't do anything spectacular. In fact, you can go look at the box score real quick. Um, you know, he didn't play poorly. He he played a pretty good game against our defense, but we just didn't let him get loose like he's been known to do a few times this year. Um, yeah, just he threw only eight incompletions, which I'm a stickler for how many incompletions a guy throws. I really look out for that. So that's a Really good job. That shows maturity by him. Um, but he only threw 186 yards, didn't throw a touchdown. Um, and he ran for 33 yards, but on 13 carries and a touchdown. Um, you know, overall, I don't think either defense should have hung their head at all in this game. Both the defenses played fantastic. Um, I don't know what would have happened if we had our starting running backs. Any of them. If Fozzie had played the whole game, had Brown and Joe um, and Fozzie, I don't know what would happen um, because Missouri's run defense looked pretty good. Now, I don't know if it looked good because it was against our third string running back or, or fourth string running back um, or, or if it was just really that good. Um, but we couldn't get a whole lot going on the ground. We only had 76 yards, 2.6 yards of carry. You could just tell the whole game we were doing a horrible job of running the, game, but running the ball. And we went away from running the ball after a while anyway. So uh, we just need to work on our passing game. Our run game will take care of itself when the backs get healthy. Um, in case you didn't know, Fozzie Whitaker, very, very serious injury. Uh, I think I said in my halftime video that it looked like he probably tore an MCL. He did, and an MCL. He's done for the year, and he's a senior, so sadly, I guess that means he's done for his career here at Texas. It was an uh, injury-ridden career, yes, but we, I loved having him. Uh, he was really our most effective rusher the year that we made the championship game against Alabama. He was easily our most effective rusher this year. I gave him a lot of crap last year because I didn't think he was good enough to run the type of offense we were wanting to run. He proved me wrong this year. Uh, I saw him in there against Rice, and I, saw, and I thought, oh, great, we're going to try to run Fossey again. We're going to try to get him involved. But he did a great job this year. Um, he's my offensive MVP of the season. I mean, I know it's not over yet. I know we still have some three tough games left in a bowl game. Um, we get a good get a good bowl game. Uh, anyway, uh, just give it up for Fozzie, and uh, I think we'll bounce back a little bit. But I think the quarterback position should be open. <coughs> Excuse me. I think the quarterback battle should be opened up again <coughs> because um, I think if McCoy had stayed in the game. I think we would have had a lot better chance to clean up this mess. But McCoy's got to be tired of getting slung into games to clean up messes. So, I'd go with McCoy because Ash, I think in a few years, yeah, Ash will be good. I think next year, after you know, a year off of practice and knowing that he has a chance to actually start, yeah, he'll be a good quarterback. be very good for us eventually uh, next year. But once he gets to come into his own. But right now... All we did against Kansas and Texas Tech was shield him and protect him with all those runs. And then push Kane to shove on the road 
They finally had to lead us to a win. It was on the road on a windy day. And he couldn't do it. And it's not fair to McCoy to throw him in there after you haven't played him for two weeks and say, you know what, you have a better chance of making something happen than Ash right now. Go make it happen. And then he can't really get anything going because he first of all didn't have time to pass. And secondly, he hasn't played in a month. Last time he played was in Oklahoma. It's not fair to McCoy. And then it's really not fair to Ash to throw him back in there and say, hey, McCoy, you couldn't get what we were hoping for done. Um, now you go give it a shot again. Uh, it's not fair to either guy. you got to settle on a quarterback. I think it should be McCoy. Either way, I think next year will be fine. But I think for this year it needs to be McCoy and then the offseason open the battle back up and see who you like. I'm biased because I love McCoy's. Sorry, that's just how I am. I love Colt McCoy. But we'll see what happens. I still have trust in Mac Brown, Brian Harson, Major Applewhite, all of them. Hook 'em horns. I give a preview for Kansas State later in the week. See you guys.